Hi, welcome to Painting with Weiji C. I'm Eric, and today we'll be painting San and Moro from Princess Mononoke. The software we'll be using today is Procreate, and I hope you enjoy this time lapse. Please subscribe if you like, and、uh, leave a comment. It helps out the channel, and I'm just starting, so enjoy. Let's start by blocking in our main figure, which is a San, or Princess Mononoke. Behind her, we'll put in Well, the general shape of Moro, who was a wolf that raised her since she was a child, as one of her own. So, as you can see here,、uh, I start by putting in the general structure of where I want her features to be.、Um, of course, this will be edited a lot more as we progress through the painting,、um, but right now I'm just trying to establish some skin tones that will work with this environment. As well as、uh, defining the general values and shadows so that、um, we can have a clearer image of what the final product will look like.、Um, so, I painted one eye first for now just to see if I was happy with the shape and、uh, placement. And,、um, Here we are refining the nose a little bit and、uh, just trying to get the general skin tones right. Of course, with、uh, digital software,、um, e、editing after the fact is、uh, much easier than traditional mediums, so feel free to experiment as you go.、Um, it doesn't necessarily have to follow a particular order or flow of things if、uh, you decide not to.、Uh, as you can see here, I do. Bits and pieces of the、um, body, as well as、uh, continuing to refine the features as we go along. So now we're、uh, adding the hairband and、uh, the general shape of、uh, what her hair will be in the final painting.、Uh, San, as you know, has a little bit of a wild streak, and her hair definitely reflects that. So we don't want her hair to sit too nicely, we want it a little bit. Bushy, a little bit frazzled, so、uh, yeah, you don't have to be too careful at this moment. We're just trying to get, you know, as I said, the general setup correct. So, usually it might be a bit early to add her face paint, but、um, as I wanted to just sort of paint with the flow, I decided to add it in a little bit early.、Um, Now we're blocking in her clothing.、Uh, she has this big fur cape that she wears, and、uh, I think it looks really cool.、Uh, she's one of my favorite designs, actually, for her characters.、Um, I think I first watched Princess Mononoke when it first came out. I think it might have been 98 or 99.、Um, at the time, I was. Middle school, just before high school, so、uh, my parents weren't expecting how violent it would be considering you know, it was a Studio Ghibli movie. So、uh, it certainly was an interesting time to go see that with them.、Uh, anyway,、uh, you might see the background color has darkened a little.、Um, sort of as you paint, sometimes you just want to change the mood a little bit and One of the great things about Procreate is、uh, when you separate things into layers, it's really easy to adjust each layer as you go.、Um, you can add a bit more light, you can darken some things.、Uh, it's really intuitive and easy to use. So, here we are just adding more shadows.、Um, of course, this being a forest environment, we want to sort of have the background colors of the green sort of reflect in.、Um, Both Moro and San. So, as you can see, we put a little bit of green over the、uh, white and beige fur of Moro, which、uh, will just help build an underlying layer that will tie everything together. So, here we are just、um, continuing refining、uh, San's body.、Um, I think. The great thing is separating, separating things into layers. You can sort of paint things individually, and then 
you know, not have to worry about the layer above or the layer under it getting disturbed. So I added a little bit of a uh, rim lighting so that uh, I had a general idea of where the light was coming from. Uh, establishing this will really help when we're painting Moro since uh, she's this big wolf god in the background. So, you know, we, we want to get her lighting right as well. So here we're just adding some white to uh, sort of indicate where the light is hitting and uh, sort of move around the features if we need to so that, uh, you know, you find that stride where it's aesthetically pleasing to you. And then you just continue to sort of add the shadows and light and sort of create and build up this sort of 3D effect of the character. Um, so that's what we're doing here. And, uh, you know, painting fur is always a challenge because it's just a lot of repetitive strokes. And, uh, you know, it can get pretty relaxing if you have a sort of zen mind to do it. And, uh, you know, sometimes after a long day's work or, you know, you just want to relax, doing something like fur is, you know, the perfect way to sort of sit back and, you know, just paint and, you know, let, let your feelings sort of guide where the painting is going. So once we get the basic blocks of fur down, we can start doing the refinement, adding more individual strands. But, uh, you know, we always want to think about clumps of fur, not sort of the individual strands, because, you know, if you focus too much on the individual strands, it gets a little bit too lifeless and stiff. So we just want the general clumps and shapes to indicate where, you know, the fur is falling and where it is flowing. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, you know, I've been told by uh, one of my mentors that you really should try to simplify things and try not to go overboard because in the end you're just going to pull your own hair out. As long as the audience can get what you're trying to convey, um, it, you don't need to go too crazy with the details, even though sometimes even I forget that advice and uh, go a little crazy. So painting the Moro's fur and then, you know, it just makes a good transition to start painting her fur cape as well. So here we are just uh, refining and adding a little bit of detail at a time, trying to get that sort of fluffy, fluffy feeling. So you see we build up from uh, broader, larger brush strokes to smaller brush strokes, and then uh, using a darker color to indicate where the shadow would fall afterwards. Um, it really is a, something you should just experiment with uh, and see what you're comfortable with. Of course, if you're having trouble getting the lighting right, you could always look up references on the internet. I mean, we've got such a wonderful resource available to us now that, you know, looking for reference is just sim as simple as typing what you're looking for into a search engine and you get all these results. I mean, reference should never be something that you shy away from. It's something that even the most pro of artists use and it helps you build a visual library in your head, which you can draw from in the future. And uh, it's just something that's a very important tool in uh, making your art convincing, especially if you want to work in realms where it requires realism or even semi-realism. So, you know, references are always a good thing. Don't, don't be fooled into thinking that, oh, they're bad, you should always draw things from memory, because how can you draw me things from memory if you don't have the visual library in the first place? So, you know, references aren't bad. Uh, I use them. A lot of artists use them. So don't be afraid of that. So now that we've got all the basic details in, uh, you can start really refining the details, uh, adding some finer strands of hair, uh, some finer lighting details, you know, uh, 
uh, building up the shadows, you know, underneath her neck or uh, underneath the cape. And uh, we've also tried to add a few highlights to the necklace to make it look more glossy. Um, you know, trying to render the materials differently so that not everything has this sort of smooth, shiny feeling that sometimes even I struggle with when doing digital art um, because you just want to make everything so beautiful and shiny. And sometimes that can end up making your final piece look a bit plastic, which, uh, you know, it's, it's too clean sometimes and it needs a little bit of grit to give it that sort of real feeling. So now we're doing the sun dapple effect, and uh, this is really fun because you can play with the layer blending, and uh, you just sort of dot the lights and uh, use different colors to sort of indicate those warm sun rays coming down from the canopy, which is really fun. Um, then you can choose a few different ways to blend and the layers to the best of your advantage and you know that's always a great thing to do um, because you know experimentation is key when doing art you don't want to have everything look the same and as you can see here we've uh, finished our piece so i hope you enjoyed this impromptu narration session and i hope you stop by again thanks everyone bye